What's good YouTube? Nobody here. Welcome back for episode 9 of Survival Tutorial. So I've noticed a lot of people asking a bunch of questions lately about the controller and everything like that. So I've decided that I'm going to give you guys a choice. If you want to see me do a video that concentrates 100% on the controller go ahead and drop a like on the video if we get to a hundred likes in the first two days of the video then i'll know that there's enough interest for me to do an entire video also if there's anything specific you want me to cover in that video go ahead and drop a comment down below and let me know what it is this is the video we've all been waiting for we're finally going to space today we are going to design a ship and fly it to space so now we're running into an issue where we have 28 batteries on our base and ship all together and in order to charge all of those batteries effectively we will need a grand total of 112 megawatts of power production now the problem that we have currently is each one of our turbines only do 400 kilowatts so we would need 280 wind turbines in order to meet the 112 megawatts of power production or we would need at 5 megawatts a piece 23 hydrogen engines now that doesn't seem that feasible at the moment so what we're going to do today is we're finally going to move into space and pick up some uranium so we can create a large nuclear reactor that can kick into overdrive when we need it to to power up our batteries otherwise we're going to be spending a lot of time sitting here waiting on batteries to charge so let's go ahead and get started on designing our first spaceship so the first thing we're going to place here is going to be the large cargo container and we need to be very careful about our placement here. We're going to need to make sure that we've got a large port on the front, the back, and the bottom. So make sure you line it up correctly. It can be a pain with the controller, I know. But we just absolutely need to make sure that they're faced in the correct direction. The way I recommend doing that is just rotate in multiple directions like this and move back just to make sure that they are. So yes, they are lined up correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and place this and just to make absolutely certain that they are lined up correctly, I'm going to go ahead and weld this piece up just so we can see where the ports are. And it looks like yes, that is exactly what we needed. So now that we have a large cargo container we're gonna we're gonna have drills on this and it's going to have to be hydrogen powered so the first thing we need to have added to this is going to be hydrogen tank anytime that you use hydrogen you're gonna need a tank so we're gonna go under gas and logistics here and we're going to find the oxygen tank and then we're going to hit the a button to move over to the hydrogen tank that's how you can scroll through these lists by the way and then select that and we are going to need some parts for this and we are going to place that directly in line with the large cargo container we have here now it doesn't really matter which direction you line this up in because as you see these are all lined up symmetrically around the the way here just make sure that we've got these large cargo ports on the back connected to the large cargo port here and that's the number one thing so I'm gonna go ahead and place that and then right behind this we're gonna actually need a large hydrogen thruster so we're gonna go into ship essentials for the large hydrogen thrusters here we're gonna choose the large hydrogen thruster because we're gonna need both large and small and you can switch that one up as you need to so we're gonna that'll be a little bit easier to place so we're just gonna place this directly on with the large port in the back because it uses a large port as well so there we go and now we are going to need to line up our H2O2 generator next so I'm gonna come in here and it should be under gas and logistics yeah you H2O2 generator right here we're gonna line this up with the large port directly behind it and we want to make sure that these two small ports here are lined up just like they are in a horizontal fashion because we're gonna be connecting things to those ports so we're going to go ahead and place this and since it's going to be a space vehicle we're going to want to make sure that we have oxygen as well that way we can refill our oxygen if we have to get out and never run out of oxygen we don't want to be in space and suffocating so we're going to come through here back into gas and logistics and we're going to find the hydrogen tank that we had before but we're going to hit the a button a few times just to get back over to the oxygen tank and choose that one now that we've got that chosen 
notice the ports here are basically the same as they were on the hydrogen. Now we're going to add two of these just to make absolutely certain that we can stay in space as long as we want to. So we're going to spin this around till those line up with the ones that were on the hydrogen on the H2O2 generator here and we're going to place that. Now we're going to want to add another one here but we're going to want to spin this one around. The main reason we're adding two here is because we need to line up with our cockpit as well. You could do two H2O2 generators if you wanted to but I'm just going to go ahead and run the oxygen tanks myself. That way we can stay longer. Now we do absolutely need the H2O2 generator just so you know because just in case we run out of hydrogen while we're in space we can always refill in space because there is plenty of ice in space. Okay so the next thing we want to place here is going to be our cockpit. That would be under ship essentials in the very top here. We're going to use the standard cockpit for now because it lines up perfectly. You notice the two ports on the back here are lined up perfectly for the ones on the oxygen tank so we're just going to place that here and we're going to go ahead and get all of this welded up for you guys and i will be right back okay now we've got all of that welded up and it seems to be lined up quite nicely that's exactly how we wanted it to be i have actually tested this build before so we will definitely be okay on this now we're gonna the next thing we're gonna need to place is going to be the batteries here so we're gonna come through and find the batteries under production and medical and we will choose them and we there's a specific place that we want to place these now we need to line this up pretty much right here at the edge of the cockpit so i'm going to place this one here and i'm going to come around and do the same exact thing on the other side except for i'm going to spin it around a little bit making sure that i line it up correctly for the lights and things like that just to make everything look better is the only reason i'm doing this you don't have to be as picky about it as i am but i do recommend it you'll feel better about your ship in the long run if you do best to spend a few seconds working on this now than come back later and decide that it's annoying you and we're going to place one battery here and one battery directly on the other side as well right there and that's all of our batteries that we need Four batteries is going to be plenty for this because we're only going to be using them mainly for the atmospheric thrusters which only work in atmosphere so we will not be using those full time. And the next thing we need to think about is our thrusters. So we're going to go ahead and pick up thrusters here. The thrusters will be under ship essentials. We're going to choose large atmospheric thrusters here. We're not going to do the small ones, we're going to do the large ones. And we're going to place those right here but facing down. So this is a spot that we need them and right next to those we're going to place them as well. We're going to need four of these total that way we can fill this up with cargo if we feel like it or extra ice or anything like that and we can still lift. So that's why we're running four large thrusters on the bottom. Now that's all the large thrusters we're going to need. Now it's time to think about these small thrusters. So I'm going to hit the up arrow to switch over to the small thrusters. Make sure these are placing forward and we're going to place these on the batteries right here. And the same over here. There we go. And that's our forward facing thrusters on the top and we're going to put two more down below here or four more down below here we want extra thrust on the front just in case that more stopping power is a good thing right and we're going to place the other one here just to keep it symmetrical and now we need to think about our side to side thrust here so i'm going to place those i found the best place for those were right here and we're just going to place an entire line directly across here on both sides there we go and now we need our reverse thrusters which we can't place the reverse thrusters quite yet because we're gonna place them right here what we need to do for before we can place those is we need to place our hydrogen thrusters so we're gonna go ahead and pick up some hydrogen thrusters here we need the smaller hydrogen thrusters now so we can just come down into our little wheel here and pick from here if we want to I'm going to go ahead and switch over to hydrogen thruster here and I'm going to hit the up arrow to get into the small ones and start placing these. Now I like to place these on pretty much every little 
port that we have here these do require being attached to a port so you can only place them where the ports are and i believe all of these yeah these ports are all going to be open so we're just going to start placing these on every single small port that we have here and we're going to add a couple more after we're done but i recommend using the existing ports that you have already that way you don't have to worry about that later and there we go i think that may be all the ports uh yes it is now i'm not using the port on the front here because that's where we're hooking our drills up to so don't worry about that quite yet okay so i'm going to go ahead and weld all this up for you and catch up on some energy here and i will be right back with you okay now that we've got that done it's time to place our other two large atmospheric or small atmospheric thrusters that we were trying to place before but we couldn't so i'm gonna place these guys right here all the way around on the bottom and the top or the sides that way we've got plenty of reverse thrust here with the small atmospherics okay and we need one more here making sure that we've got them all lined up correctly yes we do so that will be it for our thrusters we now have all the thrusters that we're gonna need now it's time to start thinking about the other things such as first thing I want to add in is going to be a timer block so that'll be under advanced systems under programmable block it will be the third option under the programmable block here now we haven't used these yet and I will be explaining how to use these correctly in this episode as well because we are definitely going to be using it so where we're going to want to place this is going to be right up here we're going to want it two spots ahead because we're going to be adding something else here so I'm just going to add this right here on the side here. We only need one timer block, but just to make sh sure that we don't need one later, I'm going to place another one here just to make absolutely certain. Having an extra is not going to be a bad idea, and it'll keep the symmetry as well. That would be the only non-symmetrical point in the whole ship if we didn't do it. So we're going to actually add another one there. So the next thing that we want to add in is going to be our ore detector because we will be using this to pick up ore while we're in space. So under wheels and weapons, if you look at the very bottom here, we'll have the ore detector. So we'll choose that and we want to place that one straight down like this where it's facing the front just to make it look good. And then on this side in order to offset that slightly, we are going to add our antenna. So the antenna would be under comms and hangers right here and we could use a beacon or an antenna here the beacons a little bit bigger I believe than, than the antenna but we can't do the antenna quite yet so we can use the beacon let's go ahead and see what the beacon looks like here on size beacons are actually a little bit smarter if you can use those in space because the pirates that are in space can't pick those up and yeah they are the right size so that's that's perfectly acceptable we're to we're gonna go, to, go ahead and place our beacon here what that's gonna do is give us a permanent gps marker for our ship so we can always find it but the pirate ships will not pick it up they will pick up an antenna so you got to be kind of careful on that this will allow us to no matter where we are we'll always be able to find our ship so now coming underneath the ship here we need to add our gyros as well so let's go ahead and find the gyroscopes here they should be under ship essentials here yes right here so we'll choose them under ship essentials and we're going to place about five six gyros here just to be on the safe side that way we've got plenty of gyro maneuverability like i said you can never really have too many gyros always do more than you think you're going to need and you can always back down on them if you need to so i'm going to place six right up underneath here one block apart and now that we've got those placed it's time to start thinking about our drill placement drills and lights are pretty much the only thing we have left here so in order to place the drills what we're going to do is we're going to use conveyors to line them up correctly so let's go ahead and scroll through and find our conveyors here now we want just a straight up small conveyor here so we're going to go ahead and choose that and we're going to put one of the small conveyors right here in the center and then off of that we are going to build straight line directly out like this we're going to want 
to go two spots out and then we're gonna do a curve line here and we want to face the curve line forward like this and we're gonna do the same thing on this other side as well we're gonna have two drills on here so two and a curve we can place our drills directly on here so we're gonna leave that for now we're gonna need two more curve lines here for what we need to do we still need some thrust in the forward direction here for our hydrogen thrust so we're gonna add those now right on the front here so let's go ahead and pick up our hydrogen thrusters remember they are under ship essentials and we're gonna use small hydrogen thrusters here so we're just gonna choose that one and we're gonna place three of them right here one two well helps if I actually place them correctly two and three there we go facing directly forward and we need our drills as well so let's go ahead and grab the drills drills will be under wheels and weapons under the grinder section here and we are going to place the drills making sure that the ports are off to the side so we can add extra thrusters here there we go and one more just like that there all right good so now that we have our drills placed we can place our extra thrusters here we'll want one right there and one right there now believe it or not once we weld all this up we are absolutely done except for one minor thing that we cannot do until we get it airborne so let's go ahead and weld all this up real quick and I'll be right back with you. Now one thing that we did that we can't really get away with at the moment is we hid one of the conveyor ports behind this hydrogen thruster and didn't give ourselves an easy way to get to it. So I'm just going to grind off the hydrogen thruster until after we get it welded up here. And now we can weld that up. And now that we got everything welded up and we can place this one, I'm going to go ahead and place that and weld it as well okay so we're almost ready to detach here now before we detach i want to do something specific one thing we haven't done yet is we haven't filled this tank completely full we do have it set to hold on to its fuel but we need to fill it completely up before we do that because we're going to need to fill this thing with hydrogen before we're before we can take off into space and i want to do that while i'm charging the batteries so if we come in here, we only have 2.9%. So I'm going to go grab a few loads of ice to drop into here. And I will be right back with you. Okay, now that we've got our hydrogen tank completely filled up, it took me about two full loads of ice, by the way, using the industrial miner. We went ahead and cut off the stock pile and cut the hydrogen engines on just to build up some extra energy in the batteries at the moment. So now that we've got that done, it's time to start thinking about chopping this thing down and getting it set up to where we can connect it to the base to fill it up with hydrogen and fill the batteries up. I went ahead and added a connector on top of the hydrogen tank here and ran a conveyor all the way across to the base. So now the base and the hydrogen area are all connected. That way it makes it easier for me to dump ice into the hydrogen tank. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to chop this thing loose. Once we get this loose, we'll go ahead and start working on making it look better. We will add some flair to it and get into painting it as well while it's charging up. So the first thing I need to do is I cut off the inertial dampeners and the hydrogen engines. Obviously the hydrogen engines aren't running because they don't have any hydrogen. But I cut off the inertial dampeners in order to keep the clang from happening from like before. So I need to jump in here and I'm going to hit the right bump or I'm going to hit the left bumper and the Y button to cut the inertial dampeners back on. You need to do that if you've cut them off before you chop it free because otherwise it's just going to fall straight to the ground. So let's hop back out and go ahead and cut it free here. Okay, we're now free and everything is good to go, it looks. Now we are using battery power, so we want to go ahead and get this landed as soon as we can, which is the whole reason why I went the way I did. I'm going to bring my camera view back out, so I'm going to hit the right bumper and up button to bring us outside of the ship and go ahead and move over here. We're also going to need some lights here, so that is going to be the next thing that we're going to add in because otherwise we're not going to be able to see what's going on here very well. I want to add some lights to the outside of the base as well. so. Let me go ahead and do that while I'm thinking about it. So we're going to go find our lights. 
and lights are under decoration number one so let's go ahead and grab up the interior lights these seem to be the better lights to use i don't think they're as bit or as bad on everything as the other lights are so let me go grab a bunch of construction components so we can build the lights okay so i'm going to add some lights on the bottom here so we can see what's going on on the bottom add plenty of them down here and i'm going to add some to the sides as well and we're going to need some up front but the ones up front we don't want regular lights we're going to want spotlights so we can see further with them so i will add those as soon as we're done here and there and we will need some spotlights so i'm just going to cycle through the list here to find the spotlights there we go and we're going to add spotlights right on top of the drills connected to the batteries here so the, the spotlight will kind of act as a guide for where our drills are and I'm also going to add some lights to the back here just need to get them placed correctly and that way we've got all of our directions covered once we do the top as well all right now that we've got some lights here we can see what's going on and the sun seems to be coming up so that's even better now the thing that we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna have to hop out real quick and we're gonna need a connector so we can connect to the base now the connector can go in one of two places here but the way we've built the ship I re really don't recommend putting the connector over where the cockpit is here because What's going to happen here is if you put your connector here, you're not going to be able to bring a lot of your components and stuff through because it is actually connected to the back back here through some small conveyor ports and you can't take a lot of your components through small conveyor ports. So we're going to put the connector directly here. That way we can easily go back and forth or we can easily bring in any components that we want to take the space, which is going to come in handy later. So I'm going to go ahead and get this welded up real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, we're now ready to dock with the base. So let's go ahead and do just that. Hop back in here and fly forward just a little bit. Move our camera around so we can see better and drop down onto the connector here and connect. Now that we're connected, we need to start setting some stuff up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our menu here by hitting the right menu button. We're going to come over to the control panel by using the right trigger. And we're going to start grouping some stuff together here. So what we need to group together specifically in this one is going to be the atmospheric thrusters and the hydrogen thrusters. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to back out of here and undock while I'm doing this. That way I can group them together easier. That way it'll only show what's in or on the current ship that we have. So we need to group all of our hydrogen thrusters together here. So I'm going to basically hold down one of the bumpers either bumper left or right works and move down all the way through the hydrogen thrusters and then hold down the other bumper in order to move through without losing our selection and then we're going to come down here to the large hydrogen thrusters that we have on the bottom or thruster that we have on the back and we're going to choose that one as well so we're going to go to the large hyd or cargo container here while holding down both of our buttons and then let go of one i'm not really sure how we would work about specifically doing that this is a little bit confusing here i don't know how to unselect something yet but i will use the computer to do this just be very careful when you're doing this to group everything together okay we've got them all selected here i'm going to type in hydro that way i know that this is the hydrogen thrusters and I'm going to save this group here and we're going to do the same thing here with the large atmospheric thrusters so we're going to come up here and we're going to select all of the atmospheric thrusters we're going to start up top and we're going to start here holding down one of our trigger or one of our bumpers and we're going to move all the way down to the bottom thruster here one way to do this actually the effective way I think to do this would be to go into the search bar and then make sure you just do atmo right here and that'll only select the atmospheric stuff here so let's go through the list so this will give us every atmospheric thruster that we have by typing it into the search and we're going to go down here and we're just going to select all of these and move over and block group we're going to call this atmo and save that now that we have those two in a 
in groups, we're going to come through and get rid of our search term here and come on down in here and we're going to find this timer block that we put in. This is the reason for the timer block. What we want to do is we want to choose the timer block, come over to set up actions and we are going to go down to groups and we're going to find the group that we're looking for. So that would be Atmo and we're going to choose Atmo here and we're going to toggle block on off. We're going to do the same thing with the hydro for the next one. So we're just going to go to the hydro again and then we're going to toggle block on off here. So what this timer block is going to do is it's going to turn, it's going to toggle both groups on or off and we need to go ahead and tell it to turn off the hydrogen. That way they're on opposite, one's on, one's off. So let's go ahead and cut off the hydrogen group here. So we're just gonna scroll all the way up to the top and choose the hydro and move over to toggle block and we're gonna toggle this block off. So now we have the hydrogen blocks and the oxygen, or hydrogen blocks and the atmospheric blocks on opposite. One's on, one's off. So then all we have to do is come through here and choose our button. So I'm going to use the down arrow for this and I'm going to find timer block one here and I'm going to go to trigger now. What that's going to do is it's going to cycle between the hydrogen and atmospheric thrusters, which we can't really do yet. So let's go ahead and land and get some hydro. Well, actually we do have some hydrogen in here, so we can go ahead and test it now. So when I hit this button, the down arrow, what should happen? is the hydrogen engines will cut on and the atmospheric engines will cut off. Let's test it real quick. No, that didn't work. We are out of hydrogen, that's the problem. So let's go ahead and dock up and get some hydrogen. So to do that, I'm going to have to go back into the menu here to the control panel and find the hydrogen tank on the base and cut off stockpile and check. Yeah, okay, good. So we actually do have hydrogen coming in, good. Actually we don't. So I'm gonna stockpile this for now, just to fill it up nice and quickly. And once it gets filled up, we can undock after we unstockpile, or we can go ahead and undock either way. But we're just gonna fill it up and cut it off a stockpile. And then undock, come up here a little bit and try this again. So the problem was I had a little bit of thrust override where I had messed up something in there. Be careful not to turn thrust override on because that'll just basically set all of them to a specific thrust and you can't really do anything with it. So let's try this one more time. Make sure we have our hydrogen engines cut off here. Okay, so now that the hydrogen engines are cut off, I'm going to come back up here and we're going to try it again. So this should automatically set us up and switch over to the hydrogen engines. This is important for later. So there we go. We don't have enough hydrogen engines to support us in atmosphere, but as long as we know that works, that's all that matters. So while that is working, I will go ahead and do a little bit of styling here. Once I get the styling done, I will show you how to paint your ship as well. All right, so now that I've gotten a little bit of what they call greebling done and made the ship look a little bit better, all I did basically was ran some lines through just to make it a little bit more continuous as you see. Just a single line through, didn't over armor anything and just put some little curves on the end using the the slopes a little bit and that's pretty much it. Just basically looked around to see what needed a quick little armor piece like I don't really like this right here but we can work on that a little bit later maybe extend it out a little bit we'll figure that out later but next up is we're gonna go ahead and figure out how to paint this thing now I'm new to the painting with the controller so bear with me for a second we'll figure this out uh, together so I'm gonna go ahead and look through the controls real quick just to make sure. And if you are not aware of how to find the controls, if you hit your main menu button, which is the button menu button on the right hand side here, it'll bring you up to the options here and you can hit Y to show help. Come down to the advanced or gamepad controls and advanced gamepad and look through here. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to look through to see what our specific painting controls are. The color tool here is what we're looking for. So we need to come up here and find out exactly what color or how to pull up the color tool, which my guess would be pressing, yeah, pressing through here and looking through to see if there's a color tool anywhere here. If you press down on the right joystick here, you'll come up into the quick actions and you'll choose select color tool, which is the direct bottom one here so we're going to go ahead and select the color tool so it does it says you can also use the right button and down arrow key so let's try that real quick hit the right button and the down arrow key yes that works that brings it up so you'll come through here and you'll choose your colors that you want to paint with here if i can figure out how to move through this menu we'll be okay there we go so just use your d-pad to move through your colors these are a bunch of preset colors and you can choose your own colors through this color slider here as well so we're going to choose uh let's see we want to this is going to be a spaceship so we're going to want something a little cool looking let's go with like a green base to start with and one neat little trick is there is a key combination let me look through the list here just to see there should be a key combination to allow us to paint the entire grid that we're looking at a specific co base color so that's what i'm looking for at the moment it would be left button right button and right trigger so if we do that left button right button right trigger we need to come up here to where we're selecting one of the blocks there we go we painted the entire grid green so now that we've got a base of green, we can change individual colors here. So you can, as you see, we've got our little swatch thing down here below. We can choose through different textures here and choose which ones we want each individual color to be. So if we use the down arrow, it'll cycle through the colors. So let's figure out, we want some, let's go for a gray and then let's choose since this is going to be yeah let's choose the battered armor here so i like that color a little bit that's going to be what we're going to use for our tools here so we're just gonna basically come through here choose them and use the right trigger to color them and also we've got heat on the engine so let's make it look that way so i'm going to come through here and choose all the engines here and color them a Accordingly. I messed that one up. I'll fix that in a bit. Aiming with the controller is a little weird for me. Like I said, I'm not really used to it yet. This is one thing I like to do. I like to color things based off of what they are. So like a lot of times I'll paint my engines separately from everything else or whatever. And that's the way I like to do my color schemes. Now how you do it is up to you, obviously. Um, a lot of people like to add like racing stripes and things such as that as well. I'm going to do the same texture here for the hydrogen engines, but we're going to go with an orange as well on that. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's see. Make sure that's all of our Atmo thrusters. That looks like all the Atmo thrusters. All right. So we're going to come back through here and choose an orange orange color for this uh yellow is going to work just fine for that i think so we're going to come through here and we're going to use the same texture and just color all of our hydrogen thrusters with the yellow color i may want to move that lot those lights right there because they look kind of weird attached to the hydrogen thrusters we're trying to i'm basically just trying to give this a slightly weathered look look like make it look like it's not brand new it's been used a few times anything that's going to heat up is going to oxidize a little bit and we're going to get some discoloration on it so i think the hydrogen tank is fine leaving it that color and one of the main reasons for doing the greebling here is just to, to straighten out some of the lines make everything look a little bit more smooth i guess okay so let me go back through and change that well no that was gray all right, so those are all good, and we're going to leave the base color as green. So we should be pretty good on all of this. I think this works out kind of nicely. And since we've got the payload here, I'm going to change one little thing just to make it look a little bit cooler. We're going to go through and look for this gold texture here, and we're going to change the cargo hold to that gold. There we go. Makes the cargo hold look a little bit special there 
and I think we're good to go on that. Now all we have to do is wait for our batteries to charge and then we can go up into space for the first time. I'm going to let those charge off camera and as soon as they are done I will get with you and we'll take our first trip. And while I'm waiting I'm going to go ahead and add in the block tools as well so we can set our drills which means I'm probably going to have to disconnect. I b grouped the batteries together and put them on the recharge thing like we did before so let me undock real quick fly up here that way I can grab just the drills here and attach the drills and check them all right good and go ahead and redock and set the batteries to recharge okay so with the added weight I, I just tested and with the added weight that we've got from the extra armor blocks from what I had before we actually needed a little bit more thrust coming from the rear here so I just added some small conveyors to attach more thrusters to that way we've got four more small thrusters in the back and let me go i'm going to go ahead and get these grouped into the correct group and everything that way we can get it all right and then we'll take off again or we'll take off and test this setup okay we should be good to go now so i'm going to go ahead and undock here and we're going to just take off straight up using the atmospheric thrusters and once we reach about terminal velocity which is around 100 meters per second then we're just going to start pulsing the thrusters a little bit just to get up to pretty much stay up to speed and we're going to cut the dampers off by that was uh, left trigger or that was left connector and Y to cut the dampers off because we don't want to be fighting against ourselves so we're just wasting energy if we do that so the only thing that should be slowing us down now is gravity now when we stop gaining acceleration as quickly using these thrusters we'll go ahead and pitch directly up and switch over to our hydrogen thrusters so we're just watching how quickly we accelerate and when we start slowing down the accelerations when we want to do that that means we're reaching the edge of the atmosphere and it's getting kind of fine and thin so we're starting to slow down on our acceleration here so now would probably be a good time to do that so we're just going to pitch straight up hit the down arrow key and then push forward and now we've got the hydrogen thrusters pushing us through now we're gonna continue to pump the hydrogen thrusters the same way or if you're really good with the stick you can set it up to where if you're very very careful since this is analog control you can pretty much keep it steady and maybe move it up a little bit the number one thing is you don't want to be trying to accelerate when you're already going max speed because that will cause issues you're basically going to be fighting yourself at that point okay we're falling back down now with this setup if you're not careful you can start falling back down so just pay close attention to make sure that you're not we're pushing just enough thrust to put us into space and we're trying to save as much fuel as we can here it's easy to be paying attention to your speed and not to which direction you're going so be careful with that i wasted quite a bit of fuel there doing this so you'll want to continue this until you reach planetary gravity of zero which we're gonna looks like we're gonna be running really really low on hydrogen when we get there so I'm just gonna start pulsing the engines that should help out quite a bit but when you reach planetary gravity of zero then you'll stop decelerating and you'll just be able to easily overcome everything yes it looks like the pulsing is the best way to go with the controller you're gonna save a lot of fuel by doing that no matter what we do we are going to want to save some of our fuel for the return trip we need to be able to accelerate towards the base while in space so just make absolutely certain that you have some fuel left over what we're gonna do here is when we get to space we're gonna hop out and we're gonna check everything by hand try to find some resources in some of the asteroids around us and then mark them with the GPS that way we've got everything marked on where it's at and then we'll come back and grab what we need hopefully we can find some ice if we can find some ice we can stay out here indefinitely so P gravity is your planetary gravity by the way it's 
down on the lower right hand corner of your screen next to your little sphere. Once that goes to zero, we will no longer have to accelerate. Okay, we're getting pretty close here. We're at 0 0.08. Once it goes down to point, past point 0 0.05, it'll drop straight to zero. So we're pretty close to the point that we want to be here. Now I need to start looking around to find some asteroids that are somewhat close by. I did bring an oxygen bottle with me just to make absolutely certain that I had enough oxygen to move around. I like to bring it least one oxygen bottle when you go to space for the first time that way you can get out of the ship and not waste your fuel because as you notice we're really low on fuel right now that was that mishap with the trying to fight gravity before we started pulsing the engines we were using fuel like it was funny okay we're at 0 0.05 g now so yep there we go we kicked over to zero now all i'm going to do is i'm going to turn on the inertial dampeners with the left bumper and the Y button. So this will bring us to a complete stop. All right, now that we're stopped, I'm gonna hop out of here. We do have the beacon, so we will always know exactly where the ship is. As you see, it says no beacon here, so that'll let us know where our ship's at at all times. So we can fly around from place to place here with our drill out and basically just go find us some ice. If we find ice, we're pretty much set. That's the number one thing we want to look for the first trip to space. So I'm going to cut off the inertial dampeners, accelerate towards the target, and then just let the inertial dampeners stay off. And we don't have to use up all of our fuel that way. There's three things we're looking for specifically in space. Is going, Those are going to be obviously ice, uranium, and platinum. Okay, so we've slowed down. And let's come through here and look to see if we can find any ice or anything for that matter. So you can fly through most of these asteroids. They're pretty big. And just look for stuff. There's gonna be small little patches of resources inside of them. So I'm using an upgraded drill at the moment. We can get a rank three drill if we get some platinum. So if we see any platinum, we're gonna grab some of that by hand too while we're out here. But the number one thing, like I said, that we're looking for at the moment is the ice. So I'm just flying around from asteroid to asteroid looking for things. And if I don't find anything at that asteroid or whatever I do find, I'm going to mark with the GPS marker. That way we know where everything is. I recommend even if it doesn't have anything to go ahead and mark it so you know you've been there. It'll save you a lot of trouble. Okay, so we have gold in this asteroid, so that means there's probably some silver nearby, I'm guessing. Let me mark this. So I'm going to hit my secondary menu button here and come over to GPS and then move down to look. And it says X is new from current position. So we're just going to hit X here and we can rename this one. I'm going to name this gold and we're done there. So now that we've got that GPS marker for gold, we now know where there's gold in space, which can be useful once we build a base in space, which should be in the next episode or two, because we'll need that for superconductors and things like that, uh, nuclear power, all that fun stuff. Ooh, I found some platinum here. This is amazing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drill my way down to the platinum and pick some of this up by hand. The reason why is this is going to let us upgrade our tools when we get back to the base. So we definitely need to carry some platinum back with us. I'm going to go ahead and fill up our inventory with this. Okay, so it looks like this entire asteroid is full of platinum and gold, which is really good. Mostly gold, but we do have platinum, so that's going to be useful later. Now that we've got this one all marked out, let's head on to the next asteroid here. Hopefully we can find some ice. I did pick up an entire load of platinum as well, so our character inventory is full. That'll allow us to go ahead and upgrade our drills when we get back to the base. And our, all of our tools. And even give us a better weapon, which we will be needing very shortly, by the way. Okay, so one thing you want to do is you want to come through here. And you want to turn up your beacon as high as possible before you head out. That way you can see as far away as possible. This will allow us to go 50 kilometers away from our beacon and still be able to see it. So that's a nice long distance there. Especially if you're going to be going out and doing things by hand here. I had to come back and get some energy. So I figured that was a good time to show you. Yeah, we're down to six hydrogen. We're definitely going to need some ice. So let's go ahead and just toggle those off so we don't waste any. 
and just let it sit there and continue to search for ice. Another thing you may want to do is make a temporary GPS location for wherever you drop your ship as well. That way you're absolutely certain even if you do go over 50 kilometers away you can find it. Now for keyboard and mouse there's actually a little trick. I don't know how quick this would be on using the controller because like I said in the last episode I'm not really sure how you would type with the controller. But if you go into your chat here by hitting enter or on the controller you can go into chat by holding down the left mouse or left bumper and hitting the down arrow and then you just type forward slash gps and then the name that you want to use it so we're gonna say temp ship and close that up that will actually put a gps marker right where you're at so that's a quick way to make a uh, gps marker if you have a keyboard and mouse or a quick way to type so we're gonna go ahead and just keep searching for ice until we find some hopefully or we run out of fuel awesome i found some ice and just in time too we are almost out of ice at the ship so i'm gonna go ahead and mark this and we are going to fly over here and pick up ice i may need to do a run by hand before I can do that. I'll have to dump this platinum into the ship if that's the case, but we'll figure that out as we go. I just have to find my signal here. It took forever to find the ice. It was like 15 kilometers away. There's probably some closer, but the problem that I'm running into right now is these asteroids are quite large and I only have my hand drill so it's kind of hard to search them all the way through. We will be bringing a large grid detector around in space pretty soon so that'll be a much easier way to find what we need i pretty much found everything except for uranium now so hopefully we can find some uranium soon because that's why we're here okay now that i'm back in the ship i'm just going to aim to, to get as close to this ice as we can here without actually hitting anything so we're going to aim slightly off center a little bit and we're just gonna fire our thrusters for a few seconds just enough to get us up to speed cutting the dampeners off there and let's go ahead and cut our thrusters back on and fire them for a second and then cut them off and I'm just gonna coast my way to the ice made sure that I had enough to stop if I need to which I will need to stop We'll probably end up pulling some in by hand just enough to get to the ice with the ship and then we'll just start drilling up the ice and fill, refill the ship. Now that we've done that, we'll be able to fly around and find some uranium as well. Alright, we managed to get barely there. Like right there on top of it. And we're still a little low, so we're, we're still moving at 1.15 meters per second. So I'm going to have to hop out real quick and empty off my containers and now that that's done I'm gonna have to go get a handful of ice to put into the ship to stop it before it hits something okay I'm being very careful not to overuse the thrusters here now that I've gotten a load of ice in there I'm letting it build up this is the reason why we wanted to bring the O2 generator because there are gonna be moments where you just run out of fuel and you're gonna have to recharge and this is the easiest way to do it. Since we have a drill on here, we can drill straight into this ice and just fill our tanks from that. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Okay, I've gotten up some ice here and I'm just basically gonna let it run through. Glad you enjoyed the video. How about dropping a like to let me know that you did. If you wanna be certain to catch the next video as it drops, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification as well. If you like what you saw and you wanna see more, click one of the two videos on your screen now. Thank you, have a nice day.